first we need to normalize a to 3 using a to 2 and get 1.6 minus j.1. So here is the circle for a real part of 1.6 and negative 0.1 will be the lower part of the Smith chart. So here's the 0.1 arc and here is our impedance at interface A. Then we can find the distance D in wavelengths. It's the same as before, 0 0.6 lambda 2 and all the way around the Smith chart and another 0.1 lambda. We wind up here where now we've labeled this A to B for a lossless material. Now since the slab is lossy, we need to make sure to account for the power loss within the slab. It would be convenient if we could also use the Smith chart to do this. What might we try to use on the Smith chart to help us figure out if our impedance stop is in the right place if the slab is lossy rather than lossless? Well, one thing we've used the Smith chart for is to determine the reflection coefficient. So let's see if we can determine what impact the lossy material has on the reflection coefficient. If we can do this, then we'll know if our impedance stop is in the right place. So first, consider the reflection coefficient at interface a. The reflection coefficient at interface A is the ratio of the reflected electric field to the incident electric field. If we assume the electric field is X polarized, then it has the fo following form. E vector phasor, as a function of Z, is X hat E naught E to the minus gamma Z. Now remember in the sinusoidal steady state we defined d equals 0 as being at the load. So we're going to have d equals 0 be at interface A. So then E vector phasor d is x hat E naught E to the positive gamma d. Now at interface A where d is equal to 0 we're going to get a reflection coefficient at interface A is just E naught, the reflected E field over the incident field because the exponential term just is equal to 1. Then next, after moving to the left along the d-axis, a distance equal to the thickness of the slab, so here now we're going to be at interface B, the reflection coefficient at minus d is going to be e naught r e to the minus gamma d over e naught i incident e to the gamma d. So I should probably down here specify that this is for the incident electric field. So the sign here e to the gamma d corresponds to the incident electric field. Then if we divide E naught R reflected over E naught incident, well that is the reflection coefficient at interface A, and then we have, taking the exponentials into account, E to the minus 2 gamma D. And gamma here is for material 2, so it's equal to alpha 2 plus J beta 2. In other words, if we know the load reflection coefficient, or the reflection coefficient at interface A, we can determine the reflection coefficient at any distance d into a lossy material as long as we know alpha and beta for that material right here. Well, the j-beta term, we've already taken that into account when we rotated around the Smith chart 0.6 lambda. That is, rotating around the Smith chart accounts for the phase change between interface A and interface B, but we still need to account for the alpha term by multiplying the reflection coefficient by E to the minus 2 alpha D. We can do this using the Smith chart by first reading off the reflection coefficient magnitude from the Smith chart. So here, finding how long this red vector is, and measuring out, just as we did for Smith uh, transmission lines, the same distance using the scale here, reflect coefficient E or I. And if we do this, we get a reflection coefficient 
of 0.238, that's the magnitude for the lossless case. Next, we want to take that value that we just got on the previous slide, and we want to multiply it times e to the minus 2 alpha z. So if we plug in our value for alpha, we'll get a 0.6. And so if we multiply 0.6 times 0.238, we're going to get the magnitude of the reflection coefficient for a lossy material is 0.14. Now we can measure this new reflection coefficient distance along on the scale to 0.14. I'm going to I'm going to label that reflection coefficient b for lossy material too. And then we can go up here along the same angle as our previous eta b lossless point was. We're going to go out a shorter distance now, the 0.14 distance which we measured down here. And we're going to call that uh, uh, that's going to go to the point eta b lossy. Now if we uh, read off eta b lossy, we're going to get 1.02 minus j.28. And we need to denormalize this. will be this expression times eta 2. So we do all that together, we'll get 123 minus j 25. And lastly, we can calculate the reflection coefficient at z equals minus d. And the process here is the same as for the last example, eta b velocity minus eta 1 over eta b velocity plus eta 1 and plug everything in and we're going to get 0.51 at an angle of 171.5 degrees. All right, take a minute and look back at the very first notes you wrote on your in-class project notebook for this design challenge. What did you write and how does it compare to what you know now? And lastly, here's an updated list of the course outcomes for this class. We just covered these in red. So all that's left is the antennas part of this class, and we'll be covering that next.